welcome to this little painting session where I'm going to be painting a little robin. So right now I've just made a line drawing of uh, the composition on my little panel. This panel it is a Jackson Smooth Painting Panel. It's a very very smooth uh, panel which I really love to paint on when I'm painting smaller paintings. It just makes it easier to paint details on a smaller format when the surface is really smooth. And it's also easier to cover the surface, I find, and to get those really clear brush strokes right away when you don't have a very textured surface that you're painting on. So this painting panel, it's not very big at all, it's just uh, 18 times 13 centimeter. So for this painting, I'm going to give myself a time limit. I'm not going to work on it any longer than four hours, so I'm going to see how far I come. Um, with the painting uh, during those four hours and uh, this painting my main goal is really just to see how the composition works out and also to really get a sense of depth and presence so I really want this to be almost borderline like a trompe l'oeil so I want the elements to really feel uh, three-dimensional and to stand out from the canvas um, so that is the main goal of this painting, to be able to do that in as uh, short, a, short a time as uh, possible. Here you can also see my palette. These are the colors that I will be working with and all the premixes that I made before I started painting on this little painting. I just find that when I have all my premixed, uh, premixed colors ready to go, then it just painting itself goes a lot quicker because I don't have to worry about um, mixing colors and stopping and, and analyzing all the time as I go. Now I kind of have a base um, base selection that I can always uh, mix in between and jump around a little bit, but at least I have more or less the colors that I want for each individual area. So I find that's really helpful to speed up the painting process, at least when I give myself a time limit. So the pigments that I will be working from during this uh, little demonstration, going from left to right are ivory black, it is raw umber, French ultramarine blue, turquoise clear, permanent rose, vermilion, transparent oxide yellow, golden yellow, winster yellow, and titanium white. So all the premixes that you can see on the, on the palette, they are made from these colors. The brushes that I will be using are just, uh, it's just a little selection of smaller brushes. So I have um, six brushes here that I will be working with throughout the demonstration and that's it's just three detail brushes because as you can see compared to the painting they're actually you know they're still fairly small brushes but they are going to be necessary to be able to paint all the details that I want and they are just a size zero from Van Gogh so they're all Van Gogh brushes and then I have a couple of filberts. These ones are a little bit worn. You can see the, the hair is a little bit going in all directions, but I really love them. They're very soft brushes, synthetic brushes that I really love to work with. And these ones are actually from a shop called Sustrande Grana. They don't just sell art supplies, they sell all kinds of things. And they also have these really cheap, extremely great brushes. So I have these for many years. I love to work with them. And then finally, I just have a another Van Gogh brush. This is a size 2 and it's just like a classic round that I've actually cut with a pair of scissors to make them extra, to make the brush hairs extra narrow and pointy. And this is also going to be a great detail brush that I'm going to use later on. Okay, so let's just jump right in and start the clock and start this uh, little painting. Okay, so the very first thing that I start painting on this little robin, it is going to be the face. Whenever I am painting something, whether it's a you know portrait or an animal or even a still life, I like to start with the vocal point. So the area on the painting that is going to be in focus, that is going to get the most attention. And uh, this is because I really like to know that I am happy with this area before I move on because if I'm not happy with this area then this is going to be something that I'm going to find really annoying and I'm not going to be able to focus on the other areas of my painting. 
So moving on, I'm adding on the red paint to the chest that is so characteristic for the little robin. And when I made the reds for this painting, I actually discovered that they had to be quite muted. I know they don't really look like it on the canvas. They actually look a lot more red now than what they did when I was mixing them, but I actually found that I had to mute the colors down quite a lot. When I started mixing the colors for this area, I started with a lot of Winsor Yellow and Vermilion, and I thought that it had to be a very colorful area, very high in chroma. But I actually discovered that the reds had to be uh, calmed down quite a lot and uh, quite uh, neutral to not uh, overpower and to not look fake. And same goes for this uh, bluish grey that I'm adding down now next to the red. This one as well, I thought it had to be a lot more blue, but this is just like um, ivory black and white. And that is enough to make this very nice, cool and um, neutral blue for the robin. That's because ivory black, it's a very, very cold black. So when you mix it with white, it appears almost uh, blue. And also for the highlights, I discovered that there's actually quite a bit of yellow in the red area. So I'm just adding that on as well. And just working with these tiny, tiny brushes that are that are um, a little bit challenging, I will not lie, but it's also a lot of fun. So to get this feathery texture on the robin, I am just moving my brush from side to side. I'm mainly moving it just downward in these short brush strokes, laying them next to each other, and that really helps me to convey this slightly feathery texture that the, the robin has. And this robin, it really had a lot of colors. It has like everything from red and blue and brown and white and green. So as you can see on my palette, I have a lot of color mixes made for this, uh, this robin. And uh, I really found that it needed it as well. I think that if you just go general when there are a lot of colors and you don't pull out all of those differences, then you're just going to make the object that you're painting a little bit less lifelike. Like it's going to lack a little bit of that glow that you get when you mix all of those different colors together. The way I'm getting these colors to melt quite seamlessly into each other is just by working my brush back and forth in between the colors. I actually have a course on how to blend and make seamless transitions so if you want to check that out then I'm going to leave a link for that below in the description there I'm sharing how to how to blend in a lot of different ways to make those really soft nice transitions in oil paint so here I have my classic round that I have cut with the scissor to make it even thinner and I've just loaded it up with a lot of uh, light blue just to pull out those feathers that are catching the light and to add them on in a way that makes it feel like they are just they just have a little bit more volume and I'm sorry about my hand kind of poking up all the time covering up the painting but it is a really small painting so it's a little bit hard not to um, not to have my hand show unfortunately during this um, little video. So moving on I'm starting to paint the iron door knocker. I'm just laying down a layer of this rusty orange that I'm going to cover up with other colors on top of it later but just to give myself a base and to have a color to unify all the other colors, I'm laying down this um, orange. And uh, this iron door knocker, it has a lot of rust, so that is why, why there will be a lot of orange. But I actually found that this 
uh, this part of the painting as well it had a lot of different colors a lot of different purples and oranges and even some dark blues and light blues so it was a lot of a lot of fun to paint again working with my tiny tiny brushes trying to really get in all the details that I am observing Okay, so after I painted the door knocker, then I started painting the background. For this background, I wanted to have a wooden texture with flaky paint on it. So this is kind of a new texture to me. I haven't painted this texture too much. I painted wood a lot, but I haven't painted it with the additional layer of the flaky paint. So this was a little bit um, challenging for me. I had to spend a big portion of the time just trying to figure out how to make this look extra realistic and three-dimensional. Now the areas where I didn't map out the the tree pattern and the, the, three, the tree texture is where I will apply the blue paint. So I wanted the paint on the panel to be this greenish blue but quite light because I, I think that that's a very beautiful color to complement the red on the chest of the robin and it's also a really beautiful color next to this kind of warmer brown that is in the wood it's a little bit of a complementary uh, combination going on one thing I didn't do which I regretted um, later on was that I didn't map out and include the shadows in the background right away. I sort of covered the whole background with paint as you can see right here before I went in and added on the cast shadow for the door knocker and for the robin to create that extra sense of depth in the painting and this just ended up being a little bit messy and time consuming because once I had that lighter paint down on the panel it was a little bit hard to add that darker paint on top and to make those those shadows really work but but there you go you learn something every time so definitely next time I'm doing this I'm going to to map out, out those shadows sooner so after I have this general pattern down on in the background then what I do is I just go in and I reinforce it and I also brighten up a lot of the areas to just make the background feel a lot brighter. I thought the wood was a little bit too dark so just wanted to brighten that up as well and I also add on the paint thicker in certain areas just to really pull out a sense of texture and a sense of volume in the background as well. So here my hand is a little bit in the way, sorry about that. I am, as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to support my brush with my little finger to make, to make it a little bit easier to make all these details. And now you can see I have got, I've laid in a lot more of that wood texture and the last thing that I'm doing is just to add in the legs. Of the robin because they're so thin and they have so many smaller details I wanted to save those for last until I had all the background in place so now that I'm happy with the background I'm just putting the last details on those as well to really place it on top of that um, that iron door knocker and also adding in a little bit of a thicker layer on some of this peeling paint just to really make it stand out a little bit better and to create some contrast. And that is it. That is my little painting of the robin and uh, I really hope you enjoyed watching the process. I really hope that you found it uh, interesting and uh, if you did, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already, then I also invite you to subscribe to my channel. I post uh, videos every week, I post oil painting information, inspirations, tips and advice and of course also time lapses of my paintings. So if this is something that you're interested in, then uh, definitely subscribe 
And I just want to thank you so much for watching the video. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the, in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I wish you a wonderful day with lots of inspiration and happy painting.